Ja, moine, and this is one of a series of videos about OpenNX. In this video, I will quickly demonstrate how to use OpenNX on Windows 7. So, OpenNX has been already installed. You can download it from the website, uh, Google for OpenNX on SourceForge, and you should get to this download page here. Select the Windows version. There's only a 32-bit version, but it should work fine on Windows 64 as well. Uh, this should get you to SourceForge, and even if the link is not working, just go to the direct link down here and install everything. It should take not too long, depending on the internet connection. The typical warnings that you see on the bottom of the screen uh, come up, so you have to say run, and then you have to make sure you have to tell it a couple of times that you really want to do this. It's just a typical Windows installation if you install anything from the web. So once the software is installed, we have it right here, open an X, and um, let's see what comes up. This is the client starts the connection wizard and we see a set a, um, a screen here to set up a new session. Open an X um, terminology is a little bit misleading. A session actually refers to a host. So let's say you have an account on a system, then for that particular system you will set up a session. But you can actually have multiple login sessions and it's really more like uh, connecting to a, a host rather than using the term session, this should be rather the term should be connection or host. So if you have a host that has a basic SSH connection, so in this case we use our um, student project server and I give it the, na the same name uh, as the So hostname, leave these alone. If your Unix system or Linux system in this case does not have uh, KDE installed, uh, then there's another selection of desktops that you might select. Uh, many Linux systems have both desktops installed or multiple desktops installed. This allows you to actually switch between them. The rest of the settings can be set as default. Um, click on next. So it's probably good to have a shortcut because you hopefully you're going to use this a lot. And then you get this screen. A lot of the information that you just settings that you just saw, you can actually go to the configure and change these around. Also the speed ADSL is pretty much okay. Uh, you can play around with it once you get um, working, but this is pretty much for a broadband. But even if you um, are actually on a campus network, the ADSL speed is pretty much okay. So then just log in with your regular credentials, just as you would log in with SSH. And the first time it of course it asks you to set a fingerprint if you haven't used this computer with SSH or anything before, just by default, and then hopefully we can log in. Uh, the authentication should be going through. Now you have a full screen window and it loads the Linux screen. So in that window now, here you have your KDE desktop and you're logged in. First thing you want to do is look for the console, the terminal here, and what you should do is you should double click on this and add this to your favorites. So then anytime you click on this um, start menu here in KDE, click on the terminal and you have a terminal here. So now you can pretty much do anything on the Linux system remotely as if you were working right um, in front of it.